All righty, men of fuel, welcome back. Glad to see everybody out here today. God bless everyone. Um, we are blessed to have Adam Cronin here as our guest speaker today. Adam founded Firestarter Ministries. Um, he is uh, first and foremost uh, a man of God and an evangelist. Um, he's been in the Melbourne area since what, 2015? Yes, sir. Married with two daughters. I'm going to let him just kind of cover everything about him and his ministry, but please give a warm round of applause for Adam Cronin. Man, Thank you, gentlemen. Um, it's great to be here. I heard a lot about this group through Trey Etheridge. I just want to honor him right now. He's a good friend of mine and, and introduced me to Brian. So um, I'm very happy to share with you guys today what God put on my heart, and I hope you guys leave here encouraged, emboldened, and ready to keep living for Christ. Amen. So my name is Brother Adam and Brother Brian, he wanted to, um, he asked me about my testimony. So I'm, I didn't have a plan to share that, but I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who saved my soul. Come on. So I'm Brother Adam with Firestarter Ministries. I had a radical encounter with the Holy Spirit in 2013 that changed my life forever. Um, I grew up in Long Island, New York with, with my mother and father and a family with an older sister and younger brother. Grew up in a Lutheran church. Um, my mom was cat, grew up Catholic. My dad was um, Baptist, so they met in the middle and decided to be Lutheran. <laughs> um, had a great upbringing, but you know, as we know, you know, the devil likes to come in and divide families. Um, at the age of 11 years old, the enemy came in and caused havoc on my family. Uh, my parents wound up getting a divorce, so I'm a product of a divorced family. I went from being a straight-A student to just losing my identity and looking for it in the world. Um, so I started chasing after uh, the hip-hop scene in New York and after uh, the, the rave and, and drug scene. and. By the time I was 17, I was, I was selling drugs. I was just up to no good, really a prodigal son. My mom thought it would be a good idea to move us to Melbourne, Florida, that, that would keep me out of trouble. But I just thought I was a big shot, so that just landed me in prison within the first year I was here. So, gentlemen, I shouldn't be here right now. That's my testimony. I was on a, a one-way track to hell. Many of my friends that I grew up with are not here right now. I'm here by the grace of God. And I, I'm thankful that men shared, shared the gospel with me in my time of need when I, was, when I was a young man. And that's why I'm so passionate about evangelism because people took the time out of their day to, to speak to a man who was lost in sin about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when I was 26 years old, I had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. I was in my dad's house in New York. I just lost my job, lost everything again. This up and down cycle. Some of you guys know what I'm talking about. And I'm in my room and out of nowhere, I just felt a rushing wind blew me back in my bed. And I encountered the love of God so strong. And I just remembered every time that I called out to Jesus and he reached down and pulled me out of the pit and put my feet back on a rock. And I just wanted to tell everybody about Jesus from that moment forward. Friend, that's not the end of the story. Two days later, I get a phone call from a friend who I've known for years. Um, and he brought me to a small storefront church in Brooklyn called Jesus Revival Center. I haven't seen this guy in si over six months since, since he called me. Somebody got into a car accident on his block on Nostrand Avenue. And when he went out to see who it was, it was a, a lady from the church who got into a car accident. She said, Matthew, where have you been? Come to church tonight. He went to a prayer meeting that night and Pastor Wayne said, where's Adam? I feel the Holy Spirit right now. And he said, he said, I don't know, I haven't seen him. He said, let's pray for Adam. And Matthew called me two days later after I had that encounter. And he said, how you doing, brother? I said, I'm doing well. And he said, well, um, I went to church the other night and, and we prayed for you. I'm like, something happened to me the other night. <laughs> I said, what night? He's like, you know, Tuesday night prayer meeting. And Tuesday night is when I had the encounter of God. 
And he said, Pastor Wayne prayed for you. I said, what did he pray for? He said, he prayed for you to get arrested in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Friends, gentlemen, that was all I needed to hear. I've been running from God all my life, and he was on a hot pursuit for me. And at that moment, I encountered the love of God. It didn't matter what I did, where, where I'd been, who I hurt. He, I knew his love surpassed all that. And I got on the ground, and that's when I gave my life fully to Christ. I repented of my sins, years of bondage, and he set me free. He baptized me with the Holy Spirit, and he set me on fire to share this good news with the world. And that's why I'm here tonight. Praise God. So, I wasn't going to share that, but it's good to have a background of, of where I'm at. So if it, wasn't, if it wasn't for that encounter of what I've been through, and the, and the men who have shared Christ with me along the way, I want to be as passionate about this as I am today. So I just want to open with another prayer. Father God, Lord, I just thank you for this time today. Um, here are fuel. I thank you for these gentlemen who have faithfully been serving you over the years, Lord God. Lord, I pray that, Lord, you would get me out of the way, Father. I pray that they would see Jesus today in me, that they would uh, have an encounter with God and that they would meet with God today and leave here encouraged and emboldened. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. 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 So today I'm going to be talking about the gospel. There's no plan B. There's one way. His name is Jesus. I just want to talk about the state of the world right now. Right now there's currently 8 plus billion people in the world as we speak. And out of those 8 billion, there's 630,000 people here in Bavar County. Maybe more after COVID because everyone's been flocking down here to paradise, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> the, great majority of the, the great majority of these people are still outside of the church, untouched by the message, and unprepared for the coming of Christ. We're living in a generation where people are lost. They don't know their identity. They're far from God. And at the rate things are going, projections from the Pew Research Center show Christians shrinking from 64% of Americans in 2020 to between 54% and 35% by 2070. That's an alarming statistic. And for, just for some context, in 1990, about 90% of Americans identified as Christians. During the 50s, weekly church attendance grew from 57% to 63% back in the day. You know where we're at now? Last year, it was down to 20% of weekly church attendance. I just want to share this, this last statistic because this is alarming. Those who identify as no religion, atheist, or agnostic have increased from 17% to 30% from 2007 to 2020. About three out of 10 people. Friends, we're in a crisis. The verse I'm gonna be sharing today is, might be very familiar. It's out of Mark 16, 15. That's gonna be our, my text for today. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. How many people ever heard that verse before? Amen. That's called the Great Commission. But according to a, Barna, a recent Barna study, churchgoers were asked that same question. And 51% who were asked that question said they have never heard of the Great Commission. 20, 25% said they have heard of it but couldn't recall exactly what it meant. Friends, only 17% actually heard of the Great Commission and could tell you what it meant. This is alarming when, alarming when over three quarters of the church doesn't know its marching orders given by the king himself before he departed. 47% of millennials believe it is wrong to share one's personal beliefs with someone of a different faith. This is the day and age and the era we're living in, where Christians are afraid to share their faith because they don't want to offend anybody, 
be rejected, or look stupid. Jesus said, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the world as a witness. Then the end will come. Turn to your neighbor and say, we got some work to do. <laughs> so I want to touch real quick on reaching the world in uncertain times. With the elections approaching and all that is going on in the world, we're heading into tumultuous times. How many people believe that? Over the next year, you guys are going to see Trump, Trump's, Trump flags waving, Biden flags waving, uh, through this, a few DeSantis flags sprinkled in there, <laughs> right? We all want to. We all want to. We all want a God-fearing president. We all want a man to come into office that's going to save this nation, that's going to stand on godly principles, that's going to stand for what's right. But man cannot save us, friends. The Bible says, do not put your trust in mortal man whom, in whom there is no help. If we, put our, if we put our trust in a president, we will be let down. If we put our trust in money, we're going to be let down. If we put our trust in a career, we're going to be let down. There's only one name under heaven and earth which man can be saved. It's the name of Jesus Christ. And we want to make his name famous. This world is looking for a savior. The state of the nation, we believe that Trump is going to save our nation. Friends, I'm here to tell you today, no president can save us. The Bible says some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we will trust in the name of the Lord our God. Give, Je give Jesus a hand clap. Amen. Come on. <laughs> I, believe, I believe Bavar County is going to be saved. All of Bavar County. All 630,000 people. But to reach 630,000 people, it's going to take all hands on deck. And that's why I want to bring this message today, the topic... Fuel stands for faith, unity, evangelism, and leadership. As the evangelist, I'm going to talk about evangelism. And when I go out there, I give two people two choices. Jesus or Jesus. There's no other way. <laughs> he's the way, the truth, the life, and he's our only hope for mankind and for America in this day and age. Let's turn to 2 Timothy chapter 4. Verse 2 through 5. Paul starts off by exhorting Tim, young Timothy. He says, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endorse sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you will be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. Amen. Amen. The world needs to hear the good news of Jesus Christ, and he's commissioned all of us to go Spread the gospel. If we, believe in, if, if we believe in Jesus, believe that that power transformed us from the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light and that we have a home in heaven, how can we not share that good news? And I want to ask you men to bear with me today. I'm a, I'm a young father. I got a six-week old at home, and I'm getting no sleep. <laughs> so all the dads in the room, you know that story. So pray for me and my wife. But um, I was determined to come here in season and out of season. I might be a little out of season, but Jesus is with me. The Holy Spirit is with me to, to give this message today. So this generation is hungry for the truth. And I just want to encourage you older gentlemen. It, you know, you turn on the news and we might say, hey, there's no hope. This generation is lost, especially, especially Generation Z. But I want to tell you, friends, we've been hitting the streets these last few years and plowing here in Brevard County and other countries, and we're seeing a great response from the youth. 
We go into the mall and we've been seeing whole friend groups give their life to Christ right then and there. They're hungry. They're looking for mentorship. They're looking for father, um, for fathers because fathers have been leaving the house with a divorce rate. And I'm going to encourage you gentlemen, your prayers have availeth much. I know you gentlemen have been praying for this region over the years. You've been praying for this country. And I believe there's going to be revival in this country. I believe we're going to see it with our very eyes. But we have to keep believing, even in the midst of darkness. So there, we have a hungry generation. But if only we would go. <laughs> the Great Commission starts off with, go! <laughs> It's not come and see, right? Invite people to church. He said, go into all the world. So as an evangelist, my job is to mobilize the church outwards to this lost and hurting generation to bring in those, those prodigal sons and daughters into the church of Christ. Amen? Amen. So I believe we overcomplicated things. But we're living in an hour where we can't afford to overcomplicate things. It, things are already overcomplicated enough. It's a simple gospel. He came, he reigned, he died, he was buried, he ascended, and he's coming back. That's the gospel. And this world needs to hear that hope that death has been defeated. And Jesus, the King of Kings, came to restore man back to the Father. Amen? Amen. So conversations today, they happen so quickly, right? Everyone is in a hurry. <laughs> right now, the attention span of, of mankind has went from 12 seconds to 8.5 seconds in the last two decades. And just for a little context, a goldfish, <laughs> a goldfish has an attention span of nine seconds. <laughs> So we're trying to communicate the gospel. We're trying to communicate a message with a people with an attention span of a goldfish on meth. <laughs> right? They, this, this is just a state we're in. The screens and, and, and people's, you know, you guys have conversations with people. Their eyes are all over the place. They can't stay engaged. Mm -hmm. Right? So we have to get this simple gospel across quickly. We don't have time. We were, at, we were at FIT sharing the gospel the other day, and we only have a moment of time, moment of time, so I move around a lot. <laughs> oh, I can do your thing, man. You're doing great. We only have a moment of time to reach these young people before they have to go to class, before they get a text message and get distracted, and then they're on to the next. Well, some people say, well, you know, friendship evangelism. I'll make friends, I'll invite them to a barbecue, you know, and, and maybe eventually God will open up a door for me to share the gospel. But the Bible says now is the day of salvation. I'm telling you guys, make friends with them after you get them saved. <laughs> so we can't wait to, we can't, we don't have time to, to build friendships. The Bible says, you know, you know, don't make friendship with the world. Get them saved and, and, then, and then be friends with them. So we have to be focused. And if you could write this down, if you're taking notes, we have to be focused, engaging, and straight to the point. Focused, engaging, and straight to the point. People are thinking about so many things, right? They're thinking about what they're going to post on Facebook, they're thinking about what they're going to eat for lunch, and they're not even finished with lunch yet, they're thinking about what's, what they're going to eat for dinner. And a lot of people, they're thinking about the here and now, but we have to shift their mindset to the reality of eternity, that where are you going to spend your eternity, heaven or hell? Amen? This is a reality. The Bible says it's, a, it's a, appointed for all men to die and then the judgment. 10 out of 10 people, they all have one thing in common, poor or rich. They're going to die one day. But, the, pro but the, the question is, where are you going to spend eternity? And we're believing for a gospel movement here in Bavar County, a gospel saturation where every man, woman, and child has a chance to either accept or reject the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And now more than ever, friends, we need that E. 
We need that E in fuel. We need that evangelism in the church. I want to share one more statistic. This is, I just found this out the other day. Only two in five pastors believe their church is effective at reaching out to non-Christians. Again. Only about two in five pastors believe their, their church is effective at reaching out to non-Christians. <clears throat> we have so many programs, we have so many meetings, but we've, we've strayed from the Great Commission and our marching orders from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But I believe in this day and age, he's raising up a remnant of evangelists and, and, and men who are sold out to God, to the calling, a company of men that will be completely surrendered to the call of the great commission of our king. And you might say, well, you know, Adam, that's for you young men. You know, that's for the younger generation. I already lived my life. But I believe God is going to wage a generational gap from the elder generation to this new generation down to Generation Z and the millennials where the wisdom of the older generation mixes with the zeal of the younger generations and we get revival. I believe it's going to happen because you men here have a lot to offer our younger generation and the younger generation need to take time to sit down and learn something. <laughs> Amen? Amen. So Jesus said the harvest is ripe. The laborers are few. I'm telling you, friends, they're out there. They're waiting to hear the good news. If only somebody would go. The Bible says anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on somebody they never heard of? And how can they hear of somebody unless a preacher is sent? That's why the scriptures state how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. Amen? Yes. So have you, have you gentlemen, have you ever seen on TV, you know, like those old 911 shows, a, a person that's caught on fire? He's in a house fire. How many people ever saw that? Like a video of someone caught on fire. I want to ask you, when you see that person, does that person care how he's dressed? Does that, care, that, does that person care what he looks like? Does that person care what he sounds like? No, because a man on fire doesn't care what he looks like, doesn't care what he sounds like. He's just burning. And that's what God's looking for in this generation. Men who will be sold out for the gospel. Unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is the power of God to bring salvation to all who believe. Amen, gentlemen. And we have an amazing opportunity in our lifetime. And although we see the world increasing in wickedness, men want to be women, women want to be men. Come on, let's talk about it. I don't have to go too much into detail. You gentlemen know the wickedness and the perversion that has increased, even in my generation. Even I'm, I'm 36 years old. Every decade, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is getting even worse and worse. The music, the debauchery. And I'm sure even in your guys' generation, you have seen the increase in wickedness. And the Bible says these things will happen. The world's getting darker. But the Bible says where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. I feel the Holy Spirit right now because I believe God is going to do something. The enemy wants to cripple us with fear, saying it's too dark out there. Stay inside, and nobody wants to hear about God. But the darker it is, the brighter we shine. When, the light, when, when it's dark out and you turn the light on, the darkness has to flee. And I believe that God is raising up a generation where we're going to see people shining bright in, the, in a world of perversion. When they see that Christian on fire, happy, full of peace, in the midst of turmoil, they're going to say, what do you got? I need it. Mm. Come on, Jack. So I'm going to end with Isaiah. Uh, how are we doing on time? We're doing great. Isaiah chapter 8, 21 through 22. 
and I believe this is going to bring you some encouragement today. It says, they will pass through it hard-pressed and hungry. And it shall happen when they are hungry that they will be enraged and curse their king and their God and look upward. Then they will look to earth and see trouble and darkness, gloom of anguish, and they will be driven into darkness. Isn't that kind of what we see today? COVID, you know, people are losing hope. They're cursing God and... And, and so much turmoil that's happening, the war in the Middle East, I know you guys have been talking about that the f last few weeks, the war in Ukraine, wars, rumors of wars. Um, and the Bible says in the last day, men's love will grow cold. We're seeing that today, friends. But take a look at this next verse in chapter 9. It says, nevertheless, the gloom will not be upon her who is distressed. All that's happening, but nevertheless, the gloom will not be upon her who is distressed. Who is he talking about? He's, ta he's talking about his church, his bride. The swirls of chaos are happening around us. We turn on the news and the fear mongering, but we can stay rooted and grounded in the word of God and in his presence and not be shaken because we have an, a kingdom that is eternal the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So there's no plan B, gentlemen. The Great Commission. Jesus never revoked that commission. He gave it. He didn't take that order back. We've tried to complicate it, right? We tried to have all these plans and programs and ways of doing it. But I believe if we stick to, stick to the simple gospel, we can make an impact in this earth that is everlasting. I'd like to leave you with a little story to think about. So in this tale, a group of angels had gathered around the Lord Jesus Christ. They gathered around him when he had come back from earth after rising from the dead. And they were asking him questions. And one angel said, Lord, how are you going to spread the gospel message throughout the whole world? It's a good question, right? Because they were looking to him. They were looking to the Messiah. He was doing a great job in his three years. He killed it. <laughs> and Jesus said, I have called out disciples to carry out my great commission. They will go and share this wonderful message with others who will respond. And they, in turn, will go and share with others who need to be saved. The angel replied, Are you telling me that you have entrusted the task of getting out the message of eternal life and salvation, the greatest news in all creation, to those earthlings, <laughs> counting on them to be witnesses to the gospel message and to take it around the world? The Lord Jesus affirmed, that's absolutely right. The angel looked at him with a face of worry and doubt. Well, Lord, what if, what if they don't do what you command them to do? What is plan B? The Lord replied, there is no plan B. <laughs> well, I'd like to end with a quick prayer. Um, is yeah. Father God, I just thank you for this time together, Lord. I thank you for your word. Uh, thank you for all the gentlemen here today, Father God. Um, we just pray for Bavard County, Lord. Uh, we pray for Israel, Lord God. We pray for the nations, Lord God. Lord, that they will come to know you, Father God. Lord, we can't have peace in the Middle East without the Prince of Peace. We can't have peace in America without the Prince of Peace. So, Lord, we need you. Lord, I thank you, Lord. Uh, thank you for Murph, the, the gentleman. Uh, his life, I, we just pray for his family right now, Father God. And Lord, I pray that you continue to use fuel, to fuel men to live a life that glorifies you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you.